Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Bill Harris Alice Fay Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist, taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin, and they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We independent druggists recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Bill Harris Alice Faye Show. Written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> A lot of married men are inclined to completely forget anniversaries and birthdays, but not Phil. Being a thoughtful and romantic husband, we find him shopping for a present for Alice's birthday, which was only two days ago. <laughs> Frankie is with him. Gee, Frankie, there must be something in this department store I can get for Alice, but I haven't seen anything yet. How about some jewelry? Nah. Perfume? Nah. Fur coat? No, nah, Alice has got all that stuff. That blonde's load. <laughs> I want to get her something that's practical. You know, something, something she can use. How about a girdle with a built-in money belt? <laughs> that's comedy, huh? Big joke, huh? Big girl with a pretty Pretty funny kid, huh? Get down, Rex. <laughs> Look, Groucho, I'm trying to tell you I forgot to get something for Alice's birthday and I want to buy her something special. Now, if you help me pick something she likes, I'll tell her, and maybe she won't dislike you so much. What do you mean, dislike me? Well, after living at our house for four weeks and practically causing Alice to have a nervous breakdown, she's learned to hate you a little. <laughs> now it's ripened into hate. I don't believe you, Curly. How could anybody learn to hate me? They... <laughs> They give mail-order courses on that subject. <laughs> Guggenheim is thinking of giving a scholarship for it. You convinced? You sold? <coughs> you made your point, so... Okay, okay, we'll go on from there. Now, there must be something in this lingerie department that Alice hey, would Curly, like... Hey, Curly, there's something over there that Alice would like. Where? That thing over there, with the flower. What's she gonna do with a floor walker? <laughs> I mean, on that model who's walking around. See her? Yeah. 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 Hey, that's a lovely negligee. Beautiful coloring, nice lines, smart styling. Her legs ain't bad either. <laughs> and if you'll notice her figure... You're... Frankie, please. I am a married man, and I have no desire to look at other women. <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> Alice makes me write it on the blackboard 500 times every morning. <laughs> Frankie, hmm? I'm going to take that negligee. Look, I'm late for an appointment at the song publishers. You buy it, I'll meet you at the house later. Okay, can... uh, well, wait a minute. You got to pay for this stuff, you know. What am I going to use for money? I got a charge account here. Just charge it. So long. Yeah. Hey, look. What? If you see anything else Alice would like, buy it and put it on my charge account. Okay. So long. Yeah. <laughs> Should charge anything Alice likes, huh? I wonder where the men's department is. <laughs> she ought to like me in a new blue serge suit. Oh, hello.
Hello, Willie. Good morning, Alice. <laughs> I received your telephone message. What did you want to see me about? Well, look, the other day I heard Mother say she was tired of living in an apartment and she'd like to have a house of her own. Why don't you and I buy one for her? Why, that is a splendid idea, Alice. Mother will love it. Uh, uh, how much do you think it will cost? Now, Willie, who cares about the cost? After all, nothing's too good for our mother. By George, you're right. <laughs> Let's chip in your money and buy her the best. My money? Willie, don't you think it's about time you spend some of your own money for a change? Pretty well, if you're going to be cheap about this, <laughs> I'll chip in too. Hmm. What kind of a place should we buy for Mother? Well, I was thinking of buying a small house in the oh, country... Mommy! Oh. Mommy, Alice and I want to ask you something about now, your... Now, now, later, girls, please. As I was saying, Willie, I'd love to buy a small house in the country. You know, a large house is too much work for a woman when she gets older. I'd like to get a cute cottage away from everything. Mm, well, I hope you get one, Alice. Well, I must run along now. If you find a place and want some cash as a down payment, I'll be glad to help you. Will you really? Yes, just call me and I'll run over to your bank and take out as much as you need. <laughs> Bye, Alice. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Uncle Willie. Bye. Mommy, why do you want a small house in the country? Oh, I'll tell you later, girls. What did you want to ask me? Did Daddy buy you a birthday present yet? No, no, he didn't. He forgot it again. Was Daddy always so forgetful? No, no. Before we were married, he was very thoughtful and attentive. Seems all men are like that. Why did they change after they get married? Well, honey, it's like when they go fishing. <laughs> Before they catch the fish, they use all kinds of expensive bait. But once they hook it, they throw it in the bottom of the boat and forget it. <laughs> Daddy been married? Honey, I've been flopping around in the bottom of that boat for eight years now. <laughs> oh, it's really not that bad. It's just that at times I get a little peeved at him. But I get over it. I can't stay mad because I've got a crush on you, sweetie pie. All the day and night time, hear me sigh. I never had the least notion. I could fall with so much emotion. Would you coo? Could you care for a cunning cottage? We could share. The world will pardon my mush. Cause I've got a crush, my baby, on you. That was pretty, Mommy. And don't worry, Daddy went shopping today. I think he's going to get you a present. Oh, do you think so? I hope he doesn't get me another negligee. For eight years, no matter what the occasion, it's always a negligee. I hope... He... Hiya, kids. Hello, honey. Hello, Phil. Have you got something for me? Have you? Huh? Have I? I sure have, baby. Mm. Ah, look at her sway. <laughs> Harris, you better keep your lips in a lead-lined box. You got a dangerous weapon there. <laughs> you all right, honey? Oh, I'll come to as soon as I have a cold shower. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alice, did, uh, did Frankie get here yet? No, he didn't. And, Phil, I'm disappointed in you. I thought, sure, you went downtown to get something for my 
My birthday. Well, I did, honey. I got something. I didn't bring it with me, but it should be here soon. I went... Uh-oh. That's probably your present now. Oh, my present's here. I'll answer it. Gee, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what I'm getting. Hello, Alice. It's me. Just what I needed. A left-handed guitar player. <laughs> Fine reception. I'd get a better greeting if I was Drew Pearson calling on the president. <laughs> I got a present here for your birthday that I brought oh, over. Oh, Frankie, you bought me a birthday present? But, Alice, Oh, I'm... you're a darling. You're so sweet. Look, this present is I appreciate this, and I'm going to give you a great big kiss. But this... Oh, well, I tried. <laughs> Go ahead, Blondie. I'm puckered up. All right, Frankie. There. On the cheek? Alice, this is an expensive present. <laughs> let's, let's try it again. This time was... Wait a minute, Remley. You finally got here, huh? Where's the present for Alice? I was just about to give it to her. Yes, and it's more than you did, Phil. Frankie, you're much more considerate than Phil. I know. <laughs> Makes you sort of feel you married the wrong man, doesn't it? <laughs> Now, wait a minute. Give me that package, Remley. Here you are, Alice. This is a birthday present from me. But Curly... Oh, that... thank you, Phil. And, and, and honey, I, I'm sorry I was so hasty. Ah, uh, no, it's all right. Well, go ahead. Open it. Curly, I tell you that... Oh, gee, I can't wait to see what's in it. I... Oh. Well, how do you like it, honey? Oh, it's very nice, but do you think I'll look good in a blue serge suit size 42? <laughs> a blue serge suit? your own fault. You grabbed the wrong package. This is the one for Alice. Well, let me have it. Well, I'm dying to see what it is. Remley, whose new suit is this and where'd you get it? Mine. I bought it at the store. You said I could charge anything I liked. That ain't what I said. I said anything Alice liked. So I ad-libbed a little. <laughs> You'll love the suit on me, Curly, and it only cost $125. $125 for a suit? I got a baseball bat with it. <laughs> Look, Remley, you're taking that suit back. All right, I'll return it and get the money instead. <laughs> I'm easy to get along with. No, you darling boy, you. Look, Alice, how you like your present? Oh, it's a beautiful negligee. It looked gorgeous hanging up with the other 247 you've given me. <laughs> well, you sound disappointed. Well, I am a little. It's beautiful, Phil, but... You always buy me the same thing. You could have bought me something different on my 22nd birthday. <laughs> but, Alice, I didn't even know you on your 22nd birthday. <laughs> Now, you're amongst friends. You can mention your right age. All right. So I took off a year. I'm 23. Hold it. <laughs> now, once and for all, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Alice, how old were you when you started in show business? Oh, I was only 16 when I started in the chorus. Uh-huh. And how long were you in the chorus? Five years. And how long were you in pictures? Twelve years. And how long have we been married? Eight. Uh uh -huh. it seems like only yesterday, darling. <laughs> Thought you had me, didn't you? I got you anyway. 16, 5, and 12. 16, 5, and 12 add up to 23? Well, of course. 6 and 5 is 11, and 2 is 13, and 1 and 1 is 2. There you are, 23. Thank you, Mrs. Einstein. <laughs> Alice, you didn't carry over the one. Why should I? If it can't get over by itself, I'm not going to help it. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'd better hang up this negligee. And thanks again for the present, Phil. Hey, Curly. What? It's none of my business, but your child bride didn't seem to care much for her present. <laughs> can't say that I blame her. Yeah. I didn't show much thought in picking it for her. I should have gotten her something nicer. Mm -hmm. I wonder what she'd really oh, like. Daddy, something that. Could I? Hey, baby Alice. Hello. Hey, you might be able to help me. Did you ever hear your mother say she wanted anything in particular? 
No, Daddy, I never heard her say she... Oh, yes, I did, too. This morning, I heard her tell Uncle Willie she'd love a small house in the country. Small house in the country? Yes. She said a big house is too much work for an old woman. <laughs> True. <laughs> you know something, Remley? Hmm? That's the solution. If Alice wants a small house in the country, I'm going to buy one for her. I'm tired of this big house, too. Come on, let's go look for a real estate agent. Hey, Curly, you don't have to look. I know a real estate agent. And if you let me handle it for you, he'll split the commission with me. <laughs> you don't mind, do you? No, it's okay with me if the guy's got some nice houses. I didn't... Oh, yeah. You know something? If I could just find the right, right place for Alice, I know it'd make her happy. Mm -hmm. A little house in the country. Yeah. You know, when you make a person happy, it's, it's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. It's... It's sort of like getting religion. The old time kind. It, it makes, it fixes, it... Curly, stop <laughs> knocking yourself out trying to get into a song. <laughs> if you want to sing old time religion, just go ahead and sing it. <laughs> Thank you, Francis. Give me that old-time religion, that old-time religion. Give me that old-time religion, cause it's good enough for me. It was good for Paul and Silas, good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas, and it's good enough for me. Show me that place by the river, that place by the river. Show me that place by the river on Jordan's sunny shore. What say Daniel from the lions? Say Daniel from the lions. What up Daniel with the lions? He can start in telling me. It was that old-time religion, religion, old-time. Religion, yes, that old time religion, and it's good enough for me. It helped Daniel with the lions, it helped to set him free. Well, if it was good enough for Daniel, then it's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion, that old time religion. Give me that old time religion, it's good enough for me. I'll be listening for Gabriel, listening for Gabriel. I'll be listening for Gabriel to blow on Judgment Day. What helped David with Goliath? Help David with Goliath. What help David slay Goliath? What was it set him free? Well, it was that old time religion, religion, old time religion. Yes, that old time religion, and it's good enough for me. It helped David with Goliath. It helped to set him free. Well, if it's good enough for David, then it's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion, religion, old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Now, what rescued Brother Jonah? What rescued Brother Jonah? What was it, Saint old Jonah, from the belly of the whale? Just that old time religion, religion, old time religion. Yes, that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It helped Jonah with the whale. Yes, it helped to set him free. Well, if it's good enough for Joni, then it's good enough for me. So give me that old time religion, religion, old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Well, give me that old time religion, old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good. Up for me, yeah. Give me that old time religion, that old time religion, give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. How'd you like that, Frankie? I wasn't listening. <laughs> Come on now, let's go over and see Ben Duffy. Ben Duffy? Who's he? He's the real estate agent. Let's go. <laughs> hey, Mr. Duffy, my uncle sent me over to find out if you found anybody to buy that house he has hit yet. Julius, nobody's going to pay $8,000 for a house that isn't worth more than three. When I take people out to see that rat trap, they laugh at me. Don't take them out to see it. Just show them the picture of it we gave you. <laughs> that picture was taken 40 years ago. The house doesn't look anything like that anymore. Well, maybe not, but you never know when some sucker might come in who... Hello, Mr. Duffy. Oh, hi, Remley. What can I do for you? I got a customer for you. Mr. Harris here wants to buy a house. Yeah, Mr. Duffy, I'm looking for a small place out in the country. This must be fate. <laughs> I just mentioned sucker and up he pops. <laughs> this is better than 
and having a magic lamp. Hey, hey, Julius, what are you doing here? This is destiny. Kismet has sent me to you. <laughs> I don't know who sent you, but tell him I'm sending you back. No, I mean, I can help you, Mr. Harris. You're looking for a place in the country, and my uncle happens to have one for sale. Yeah? Well, I might be interested in... Hey, wait a minute. What does that place look like? Oh, it's beautiful. I got a picture here. See for yourself. Yeah. Nice looking layout, Remley. Mm hmm. Say, uh, Julius, how much your uncle want for this place? Curly, please, let me handle the financial details for you. <laughs> I can outsmart this kid and get it for you cheap. Okay, but remember, I don't want to go any higher than 15000 So you better start at 10000 and bargain with him. Try to make a fast deal. Curly, I'm your broker. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Mr. Abruzio, how much do you want for this abode? Eight thousand. Oh, no, you don't. My client's bottom offer is ten thousand, and it'll only go as high as... <laughs> hey, uh, Curly, was that deal fast enough for you? Oh, yeah, fast. I was just jet-propelled out of seven thousand. <laughs> he only wanted eight. Why'd you give him fifteen? I get a bigger commission that way. <laughs> I'll handle this myself and get a better deal. Julius, I ain't going to give you but 5000 for this house. Are you kidding? I just sold it for fifteen. do Don't be a wise guy. I'll give you six. Make it 14. Eight. 13. 10. 12. 14. 15. 16. <laughs> That's better. You see, Frankie, I got it for 16. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> You outsmarted the kid. You only paid a thousand more than I did. I don't, I don't care. I was tricked, and I ain't going to give no sixteen. All right, Mister Harris, you're a friend of mine. I'll let you have it for ten, but my uncle wants it in cash. Okay, okay, okay. But before I make a deal, I want to see the house first. Oh, well, if you want to see it first, you'll have to pay a small deposit. How much? Ten thousand dollars. <laughs> Ten thousand? Fourteen thousand. Fifteen. Sixteen. Two. Will you two cut that out? <laughs> Julius, I'm going to give your uncle a five hundred dollar deposit. Okay, give me the check. All right. I'll make a nice commission on this deal. Here's the check, Julius. Thanks. I'll be seeing you, Mr. Harris. Hey, wait a minute, kid. Look, if I don't like the house, I want my deposit back from your uncle. Oh, sure. He'll give it back to you. Well, I find them. How should I know where he's going to be hiding out? <laughs> hiding out? I wonder what that means. What kind of talk? No, is it's nothing at all, Curly. It's nothing. Now then, Mr. Duffy, how much can you give us for the house Mr. Harris is living in now? Frankie. Huh? What are you selling my house for? Well, you won't need it if you're moving into the other house. You can't live in two places at once. Ah, yeah, I get you right. <laughs> Say, Mr. Duffy, how much can you get me Curly, for my are house? are you trying to do me out of my commissions? <laughs> I'll handle this. Mr. Duffy, it cost Mr. Harris 35000 to have his house built. How much would you give me for it? $25,000. i will take sixteen. dollars Sold! <laughs> Say, Remley, is that number habit forming? <laughs> the man offered twenty-five. dollars that's right, Mr. Harris. I have a customer, a Mr. Swartz, who's always been interested in your house. He'll snap it up at twenty-five thousand. Well, if that's the best I can do, that's the best I can do. Tell Mr. Swartz he can have it. Fine. Just sign this bill of sale. It's a deal. Okay. Hey, Remley. Yeah. I can't wait to get home and tell Alice about our new little cottage in the country. <laughs> <laughs> so excited about, Phil. Go on, Curly, tell her. Hey, Alice, have I got a surprise for you. The children told me you wanted a small house in the country, so I went out and bought one for you as a birthday present. Oh, Phil, that's the best birthday present you could give me. You're the sweetest man in the world. Yeah, you just ain't chomping your gums, baby. <laughs> oh, it isn't every man who buys a house for his mother-in-law. Mother-in-law? Oh, Alice, I thought you wanted to move into a smaller house. Oh, don't be silly. You couldn't get me out of this house. I love this place, and I intend to spend the rest of my life here with just you and the children. 
And Mr. Schwartz. <laughs> Who's Mr. Schwartz? Oh, he's just the guy I sold this house. Sold it? Oh, no. Well, you sold this now, house. Now, wait a minute, honey. You see, I thought... Oh, never mind what you thought. You buy it back and do it right away, goon. Let's go on. <laughs> Come on, Remley, let's go. <laughs> oh, brother, am I in trouble. Do you think Schwartz will sell my house back to me? Oh, I'll get it back for you, Curly. It'll be a steal at 30000 30000 Frankie, that's 5000 more than I sold it for, and the other house cost me 10000 Where am I going to get that kind of money? Don't worry, Curly. I'm your pal. I'll help you out. I can loan you 1800 at the legal rate of interest, 20%. You'll lend me? Mm -hmm. at, uh, hold it, Orville. What? Just one second. Where did you get $1,800? For my commissions on all those houses I bought and sold for you. <laughs> I wonder how you set a booby trap in a left handed guitar. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, here's a fellow with some questions for our Rexall family druggist. Say, where can I find a Rexall drugstore? Well, they are all over the country, my friend. 10,000 of them. Most of them independent family druggists like me. And you can always tell them by the orange and blue Rexall sign on their windows. And that sign means they sell Rexall drug products? Exactly. More than 2,000 of them. We Rexall druggists may disagree about politics and baseball teams, but there's one thing we're really sold on. Rexall drug products? Right, my friend. You see, we druggists know that Rexall products are carefully and purely compounded, that they're tested over and over again, and that they're constantly being improved by the never-ending research that goes on in Rexall's big laboratories. So, when our customers ask us to recommend a brand, we just naturally tell them... You can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Now, how did you know that? <laughs> because I found it out for myself. Why do you think I was looking for a Rexall drugstore in the first place? Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Phil again. Maybe some of you have never seen a kid who couldn't walk or talk or even feed himself. Even if you haven't, I know you want to do something to help them. And here's your opportunity. Buy Easter seals. Buy a lot of them. These small seals provide the special medical and vocational services that crippled children need. So please, buy Easter seals. Good night. Good night now. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Included in today's cast was Leo Cleary. Alice Fay appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. This is Bill Foreman wishing good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.